There's the six bongs on the wall. And it's Fish at Six. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter, 40 years on the NFL, 34 years on the Cowboys, and not really much of a conspiracy theorist in general. Although, I hear there's a lot of money in it, <laughs> in being a media conspiracy theorist. For a minute, uh, if I can bear it, we're going to actually treat this seriously. Uh, Cowboys, Country.com, our Sports Illustrated site. You can type in Cowboys space SI and find it right now. They're, uh, pardon our dust, they're working on some things. Treats this as seriously as, as we can, as straight-faced as we can, the DAC conspiracy theory. This comes from an actual NFL executive quoted by The Athletic. I'm going to trust, it's Mike Sando, the writer. I trust the writer. Uh, I, I trust that he actually got this quote from an actual NFL executive. Brace yourselves. And then we're going to work this out together. The lead to our story. Could the Dallas Cowboys offseason plans be changing from all in, as team owner Jerry Jones once proclaimed, to trying to self-sabotage their own season trying to keep a straight face in an attempt to save money on an eventual Dak Prescott contract extension. Diddly diddly dink. Wait, what? Could they do what? Or as Jimmy Johnson used to say when he didn't understand the question or didn't like the questioner, do, do what now? <laughs> the Cowboys are doing what? According to this NFL executive, they are planning to lose in 2024. So in 2025, they can save money on the Dak Prescott contract. I would kill to find out who that NFL executive is, who told that to The Athletic. It's beyond moronic. The thing about a Cowboy Nation right now is you have been put in position, not uh, any fault of yours. Conspiracy theories coming along, and I don't blame you for going, I don't know. What they're doing does seem pretty crazy. Uh, somebody's out there saying that this is all because, first of all, there's people out there saying this is happening, what the Cowboys are doing, because Jerry's out of money. No, he's not. Then there's Jerry's going to sell the team, and so uh, he's going to sell the team anyway, so why pitch any money into it? Completely ridiculous, except I, I understand why when you hear that, you're going... I mean, I don't know. I don't have any other very good ideas except for the one that I pitched here five weeks ago that has now caught fire, which is all in means we're going to try with what we've got this year and then blow it up and start over in 2025, which is precisely what they're doing. Look at, I, I see your comments. Fish, I know it's ridiculous, but I won't, I don't put penny, anything past them now. I get it. It's ridiculous, but here it goes. The opinion of one anonymous NFL executive, Sando at The Athletic interviews, gets three quotes from three different executives. Here's the quote from the executive about what he claims the Cowboys are thinking and doing. If Dak wants 60 million a year, which he does, by the way, as I've told you. You know what we're going to do instead? This executive says, pretending that he's a Cowboy executive. Telling the Athletic what he believes the Cowboys are doing. We're going to have an average team. We're going to play worse. 
And then, Dak, we're going to get you at a better price. How do you like that? This is an actual person who helps run an NFL team. Theorizing. My instant short reaction is, this is an outrageous guess at what would be a moronic plan. We have all in, then we have do more with less. I got blow it up after this year and we got conspiracy theories. Opera Doc says, and Opera Doc Smart says, well, I've thought of this. You lower DAX value. Okay, but look, work together now with me. Ken Lawson, Uncle Fish Premium. How's that going to sit with the players and the coaching staff? And the no, first of all, let's explain uh, the phrase that I coined organic tanking. You don't lose on purpose. Not really, not ever. You lose organically. You tank organically. And the Cowboys have done that. That's how they ended up with the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft and got Ezekiel Elliott. At the end of that year, quarterbacks hurt, right? Romo's hurt. They recognize they're not going anywhere. And so they start not trying very hard to win games. And it ended up with the fourth, fourth overall pick. That you do. Mavericks, Mavericks did that last year. Dallas Mavericks did that last year. They were not, they were not trying very hard at the end. Um, the, the team that did it best is the Annapolis Colts. Peyton Manning gets, hurts his neck. Andrew Lux in the next draft. The, Pey the uh, Colts for the first month tried to win. And then when they realized that because it wasn't going to work, then they started not trying very hard to win and ended up following up, if I'm remembering right, Peyton Manning with Andrew Luck. So there is such a thing as organic tanking, but you don't do it in April, ever. Because you don't know yet if you're going to be good or bad. This roster is good. Stephen White, Uncle Fish Premium. Hey, how do I get the circle and the star? Ask the fellas, I'll show you how. How's this going to set with the shareholders? Well, and you're the shareholder. And I would say to you that if this was true and discovered to be true, that the shareholders, you, would think it was so idiotic that you would have a bigger, better reason than ever. Gene Bryant makes a good point. This, yes, the Spurs did that after the Spurs realized. But remember now, that was after David Robinson got hurt, not before he got hurt. So you do it when Tony Romo gets hurt and you're out of the playoffs. But you don't do it. But you don't do it before David Robinson gets hurt. You're trying to win the world championship with David Robinson. Then he gets hurt. Then you go. You know, we could have David Robinson, and if we're bad enough for the rest of the year because he's hurt, we can get Tim Duncan, and that's what they did. I don't have to go through the roster losses. I think you understand. I think we've talked about, you understand my explanation for why they're doing what they're doing. Doesn't mean, you'll, doesn't mean I like it. Doesn't mean you have to like it. Just helping us all understand it. This executive is right about one thing. The Cowboys roster is worse than it was three months ago. There's no question about that. It's also notable that the Cowboys' cautious approach to spending isn't just about Dak when it comes to star caliber players. They haven't signed CeeDee Lamb. And Jerry's comment about CeeDee Lamb is, I mean, he really did say this, uh, Mr. Media, yeah, what you got to measure is, is, is one player uh, worth more than four or five that you can get? He actually said that. He also said, whichever team had CD, I'm paraphrasing, whichever team had CD Lamb. What do you mean, whichever team, Jerry? He plays for your team. And he's under contract for two more years. What are you doing? What are you saying? 
Dean Graham, five dollar pitching. How do you get coaches to organically tank under one year deals if we suck? Well, now if you suck, it's gonna be real easy. JV, this feels like conspiracy theory. Could be twelve. I don't think there's any question that this team on paper is still a on paper. Not paper money, by the way. I'm not betting on it. I'm just saying, look at this team. Look at the NFC East. This team wins 10 games. Capable of winning 10 games or more. Still a good roster. Um, and Michael Parsons hasn't been signed to his extension either. So... Let's dig into the roster. Gene Bryant, they will be bad. The only thing, Gene, and I, I know how smart you are. You're one of my 70,000 best fish head friends. The attitude might be bad. The atmosphere might be bad. The mood might be bad. The roster is good. Don't argue. Let's not argue that. The roster is good. You know it's good. Don't let your sourpuss feeling, which you've earned, Color your opinion of the roster on paper. By the way, Lyle Collins uh, is leaving. Now, he, again, he wasn't under contract yet, but the Cowboys didn't uh, opt to keep Lyle Collins around. They opted to keep Chuma Idoga, and so Lyle Collins goes to the Bills. Um, this comes up all the time. I need to clear this up. It comes up on every show, and that's okay. Fish, wait a minute. What about, what, what's this trade Dak? He, you can't trade Dak. Yes, you can't. We should really rename the no trade clause. It should be called a trade veto clause. You can trade Dak Prescott. It's just that he can veto any trade that he doesn't want accepted, which, by the way, the Cowboys should have never. Why would you ever put that in that contract? Ratio, why would they keep Dak's buddy Lyle around? Uh, only because they need offensive linemen and uh, in terms of physicality, I don't, well, first of all, uh, two answers. One, you could keep Dak's buddy around because he's Dak's buddy. You could. You could factor that in. 1%, 2%, 0. 0.0001%. But the Buffalo Bills just decided that Lyle Collins could play. Rachel, you're deciding you can't? Okay. You versus the Buffalo Bills. We'll see who turns out to be right. Josh Blaze, $10 pitching. The same people that think the former third string quarterback for the 49ers can come in and do the same job as last year's MVP runner up, Trey Lance, has established in no way that he can do anything similar to what Dak Prescott did last year in the regular season, anyway. And I point out the same, this is the same thing as the, hey, Dak can't be traded thing that we have to clear up. Hey, just have Trey Lance start next year. He's not under contract next year. Michael Evans, Uncle Fish Premium. Be because who's earned what? Trey Lance has earned what? Dak Prescott's earned what? Nobody's earned nothing. There is no deserve. Rick C, they'll beat bad teams and lose to the good teams. I'm, I don't have the schedule in front of me, and neither do you. I'm saying that this is a good roster. That's all I'm saying on paper. Andres, runner up. Only the Dakota fans would use that advantage honor. Andres, you're nuts. He finished second in the NFL in MVP. Come on. He's an MVP finalist. You're going to hold that against him because he didn't win it? AD, Fish, you missed my first pitch in. Not on purpose, I assure you, AD. Let me give it a look. There's Benny Sanchez. Fish, you're awesome. Thank you, Benny. AD, AD, JV, I got you. Dean Graham, we got you. AD, I don't want to do it to you. You are my 70,000 best friends. There he goes. Uh, Michael Penix drops to the 24th pick. Do the Cowboys draft him? This is a great sidebar question. First of all, we don't know what the Cowboys think of Penix or Bo Nix. So let's say, uh, instead of doing that player specifically, AD, let's do it another way. If the Cowboys have a quarterback, not the top three guys. They're gone, gone, gone. If the Cowboys, let's have, have quarterback X 
It's Knicks with an X or Penix with an X. Hey, they're quarterback X. Rated as the 12th best player in the draft. I don't know what they will do, but I know what they should do at 24 if he's still there. If he's on your board as the 13th best player in the draft, you take him. No questions asked. And then you go about your business trading deck. Of course, you won't you won't get picks for them that that that, that are that help now. It's it'll be all about the future. But if, in that scenario, because I you don't want both of them here. I, I was here for Wall Shakeman. It wasn't good at all. Let's dig into the logic of the conspiracy theory that the Cowboys are planning to be bad so they can get Dak cheaper. If for a minute there, by the way, don't be embarrassed if you're thinking, I don't know, that's possible. Don't be embarrassed until after I say this. Then if you still think it, then you can be embarrassed. This theory, more than theory, from an NFL executive, Anonymous, the Cowboys are taking a 12-5 and five playoff roster and throwing away a chance to win in 24. So in spring of 2025, they can talk Dak into signing for $55 million, let's say, APY, instead of $60 million APY. So they're throwing away a season for $5 million of cap room? $5 million of cap room will get you half of Tyler Biotish. That doesn't make any sense. So that's out. Tanking a season is not worth $5 million for the cap room. So that's out. So you're bad on purpose. And the guys in the locker room are going, they're making us be bad on purpose. And so Dallas is a losing team. And this idiot thinks that Dak would be more likely to resign for less with a losing team than he would to sign with a winning team? No. Oh, and by the way, if you don't sign him this year, he's a free agent next March. He doesn't care. He's not obliged to care what you are or were. He will go to the highest, best bidder. And even more than the no trade clause now, he, he will be unfettered. He'll get, get, you don't have to give up anything for him. Forget to go into crappy New England, which he might say no to if that trade was actually on the table. He can go to Pittsburgh. Or Denver. Or whatever, wherever he thinks, hey, hey, they're a quarterback away. So, no, he would not be more inclined. You wouldn't either. Imagine that. Uh, Dean Graham, Jim Laws, AJ M, uh, Ken Lawson, Robert, you guys work for Company X. Guys, you, you get, you're on commission sales. We're going to not let you sell anything this year. <laughs> so when we offer you a contract next year, we can come to you and say, well, you didn't sell anything last year. What's incredible. Incredibly stupid. Consider So no, consider this. So other NFL teams who are sitting here now going, hey, listen, if Dak Prescott's a free agent in March 25, let's let's be on this. This plan would dissuade them. All of a sudden they'd go, whoo, boy, we liked Dak. We love Dak. In 2024, they're looking back now. Now it's March 2025, and the Cowboys were bad on purpose. That well, wasn't really his fault. And now we don't like him anymore. So now we, we're not going to bid on Dak Prescott. That's not going to happen. 
The teams that like him now will like him then. The teams that right now think he's a $50 million quarterback to me right now will recognize if they need a quarterback, he's a $60 million quarterback a year from now. Because if the Cowboys are bad and it's ownership's plan for them to be bad, it won't be the player's fault. It won't mean that C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, and Dak Prescott are bad. It will just mean their ownership and their front office is stupid and bad. So none of this is happening. But yet the Athletic has this quote. And so the conspiracy theories fly. Spiral, $10 pitch in. Mr. Mack, I believe the salary cap has made the league weak. Let the billionaires spend what they want. The salary cap, of course, designed in large part by Jerry Jones himself some 30 years ago, was designed to save his brothers from themselves, which is one of the reasons that Jerry's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Travis, $5 pitch in. A connection between Jerry and Shadur. Well, uh, they, they've certainly met because they met at AT&T Stadium when Dion was here too. And Jerry said to him, uh, Mr. Mr. Shatter, uh, you could very well be the first pick in this draft. He said that to him. So if you want the, if you want the Dion Shadur Cowboys conspiracy theory, that's less dumb than this one. Caller Steve, the roster is worse. It is. The roster is worse today than it was three months ago. They've won zero playoff games. Not completely true. They beat Tampa. How do you figure this team will win double digits? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not putting money on it. Look at the NFC East. That would be, that would be what I would say. Look at the NFC East. If you, if you are hoping the Cowboys have a chance to be good, your reason would be look at the NFC East. Jacko, $50 pitch in. The Jones family is done trying to win. It's about money, and that's your choice. I have a couple, couple wrestling matches here, Jacko, and I appreciate your thought and the very generous pitch in of the brief fund. Jerry not trying to win is not the Jerry that I've known for 34 years. So I would need God to whisper in my ear that that's true, to believe it. But it's about money. We gave you the portfolio thesis the other day. Uh, this comes from our friend Joey Ikes. And this would, th the theory is Stephen Jones is running, in large part along with Jerry, obviously, is running as a CEO, not just of the Cowboys, COO, not just of the Cowboys. He's a COO of a lot of Jones companies and brands. This is a theory now, the portfolio theory. And Rather than say the Cowboys are separate from our investments in oil and gas, entertainment, real estate, rather than say that, the theory is Stephen is saying it's all one portfolio. We got $100 million right now we want to spend. You want to spend it on Comstock or you want to spend it on Dak and Micah and CD? And that day, at the start of free agency, they spent it on Comstock. Theory. Spiral, thanks for your thoughts. Kenneth Easley. Fish, regarding this morning's show with a $10 pitch in, uh, even though Jerry would never allow the Chiefs to come to town, how's the deal coming from the Adelson family and Cuban? Jerry will want a piece of that pie. The piece of that pie will start with, there will, there will be a cowboy casino where Texas Stadium used to be. Mark my words. There'll be a Dallas Cowboys casino. This might be seven years from now, but there will be one. Christopher T, $5 pitch in. I feel they wait for the trade deadline. To do what? Dump everybody? If the Cowboys have a bad record at the trade deadline and Dak Prescott is about to free a free agent, yes, you're onto something. But not Micah and not C.D. Lamb. This, my view is this. I understand the straddling the fence on Dak. I do. 
I understand. I'm kind of sold on Dak. I'm not sold on Dak. He's an MVP candidate. They don't win. We don't win in the play. I get that. I get the debate. The Cowboys, what they're doing wrong here is not making up their minds. They changed their minds. And now they're straddling that fence. But that doesn't apply to Lamb and that doesn't apply to Parsons. Those are the kind of players that you win with. You, you, you're not going to build an entire team out of, you can't have 53 TJ Basses. No offense to TJ Bass. Who made himself into a player. No offense. So they're not going to tank a season so they can save $5 million in cap money. Dak Prescott is not going to be more inclined to stay if the Cowboys stink. Uh, by the way, either will other players. We stink on purpose, so you pay us less? How's that going to play with Micah and CeeDee Lamb? And other teams who like Dak Prescott will still like him. Even if the Cowboys decide to decide he's got a, 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 a hangnail, we're going to put him on IR. That will not change what other teams think of Dak Prescott if they think highly of him. It will not. The best theory I would humbly submit is still the one that we've talked about here for five weeks, that the plan inside that building right there is the blow it up plan. Re restock, rebuild, remodel, call it what you will, after this year. with a debate about whether or not Dak is a part of it. We, we live in a media climate where conspiracy theories get a lot of traction. Uh, and one of my jobs, the way I see it, is to, is to take stories like this and break them down with your help. And I appreciate you pitching in and getting us there tonight. Uh, tomorrow, is Friday prize day. Tomorrow, somebody is going to get their shot. Maybe it'll be T2, whose uh, parents are celebrating their 43rd wedding anniversary. Wow. Cindy and Tom are in Philadelphia rooting for the Cowboys. And, and I'm sure having a date night, if you know what I mean. Ed Too Tall Jones autographed Cowboys jersey can and just might be yours and Friday prize day right here on the channel is the day. Oh, hold on. Seven. Today's my mom's 80th birthday. Anybody else need a shout out? Get them in. No, Steve Burks, you can't put Jersey, Georgia yet. It's too, just hold on. Christopher T. They wait for bad teams to want to trade and extend our players at that time to get us the cap room. Not following what you're saying. You, you can do anything you want to get cap room at any time you want, virtually, and the Cowboys are choosing not to do that. Thus, the, the proliferation, the cottage industry of crazy, idiotic, moronic, Dak Cowboy conspiracy theories. Fish out.